In this video, I'm going to show you how you can use your TI-84 graphing calculator in order to graph an absolute value function. This right here is an example of an absolute value function, and I'll read it to you. It's y is equal to 2 times the absolute value of the sum of x plus 3, and then minus 5 here on the end. Now, if you are familiar with absolute value functions, you'll know that this plus 3 in here, that represents the horizontal slide. Right here we have minus 5, which represents the vertical slide. And this 2 in front, this here represents the scale of the absolute value function. And remember that absolute value functions will always take a V shape. Not a U shape, but a sharp V shape. And I'm going to use my graph and calculator here in order to graph this equation onto this set of axes. So in order to graph, we're going to go to our y equals menu, which is right here. Notice that everything is cleared out. None of my plots are highlighted, so nothing's going to mess with my graph. And I'm going to type in 2 times the absolute value of x plus 3. I'm going to close my absolute value bars, and then minus 5. Now, your calculator might look a little bit different from mine. So if it does, just make sure to use these steps, but to adapt to your own screen. So y is equal to 2. And then I have to open up these absolute value bars. I'm going to click the button that says Math. I, I, I see here that I'm on the Math heading. I want to be over to the NUM heading. So I'm going to click the right button to bring me over that way. And then you'll notice that this first option is ABF. That stands for absolute value. So I will choose that, and that will open up my absolute value bars for me. I will then type in x plus 3, and I will close those absolute value bars by using a parenthesis here, and then minus 5 on the end, minus 5. Again, some of you might see something different right here. Some calculators actually open up the actual symbols for the absolute value bars. Whatever your screen looks like, just make sure that you start with the x and you end with the 3. So you close the absolute value bars off there, and then at the end, you put minus 5. Now, if you want to take a look at this graph to see what it's, a, it's going to look like on your graph, well, it's going to look like this. Notice that it does, in fact, have that V shape. Now, how do I get this picture on here? I need to be exact, but I have to make sure that I'm traveling through the proper points. Well, in order to list out all the points that this function travels through, I click Second Graph. And this gives me my domain and my range. So I'm going to scroll up here and go to my smallest x value. My smallest x value is right here. That's going to be a negative 10. And my highest x value is a positive 10. So that's going to be the domain that I can graph on. So notice here that my first point that this function travels through is negative 10, 9. So I'm going to place this point right here on negative 10, 9. My next point is negative 9, 7. So I will place that point here on negative 9, 7. And then I'm just going to basically follow the same steps for every one of these points. So negative 8, 5, se negative 7, 3, negative 6, 1. Now notice that we have a constant rate of change here. This is looking like a straight line. It's the left side of that V. Once we hit the vertex of the V, and then we're going to go up the other direction. Negative 5, negative 1 is my next point. Negative 4, negative 3 will be my next point. Now you might say, oh, well, the screen stopped. Does that mean I stopped? No, it does not. I'm going to scroll down, and I'm going to look at all of the other points through which this function travels. Negative 3, negative 5 is my Next one, negative 3, negative 5 is right there. And then negative 2, negative 3 is right here. So notice how we hit the vertex right here, and now we're going to turn around and go in the opposite direction. Now, I just want to focus on this point for just a second. Notice that the vertex is on the point negative, five, uh, negative 3, negative 5. Notice that we have a positive 3 and a negative 5 in our equation, and that is not a coincidence. The vertex is always going to be present in an absolute function in those two numbers. 
But whatever your x value is of the vertex, you're going to take the opposite sign and you're going to place it here. So our x value is negative 3, so in the equation you write positive 3. And negative 5 is the y value, that stays as it is. So you take the, the additive inverse of the x value and you keep the y value as it is. And that's going to give you your vertex whenever you look at your equation. And let's continue on here. I left off with negative 2, negative 3. So now I'm going to do negative 1, negative 1. And you can just follow the pattern at this point, but I'm going to just be careful and make sure that I am doing this correctly by comparing it to my screen. 1, 3 comes next. And then 2, 5. And then 3, 7. And like I said, you can continue the pattern here, but I'm just going to check and make sure that I am doing this correctly. 4, 9 comes next. Then notice that I've reached the end of my graph. I can't go any further than that because my next point would be 5, 11, in which case we would go off of the graph up here somewhere. So you have all of your points plotted. Now we're just going to draw our lines through. I'm going to make my lines blue here. Connect your points. 1, and two, remember you should be using a ruler and a pencil on a sheet of paper if you are following along. And there you go. There is your graph for your absolute value function. Let's just make sure that it does in fact look like the one that we have here, and it does. And that's everything. That is how you graph an absolute value function using your TI-84 or whatever graphing calculator you may have. Make sure that you are well versed in your Y equals menu, where to find the absolute value button and make sure that you type in that equation correctly. Remember to apply your graph to compare and second graph brings you to your table of point values. And that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please let me know down in the comments below and thank you for watching.